Hi everybody and welcome to another piano review here at Merriam Pianos. My name is Stu Harrison and today we are taking a look at Roland's fantastic DP603 digital piano. If it's the first time to the channel, we'd really appreciate if you did subscribe. And of course, as you're watching it, please leave comments at the bottom of the video. We try and respond to each and every one, and it always makes this process so much more fun. As well, check out the description and the screen throughout the video for a very special offer on the DP603 that we have just for our YouTube clients. So let's get started right away. Thanks again for joining us. So let's talk about the sound on the DP603. Now, first off, the DP603 to me represents one of the absolute best values in terms of the technology level, the spec level that you get for its price point. Let's keep in mind that in Canada, where we're located, this instrument is selling for around $3,000. In the States, it's about $2,500. And for that price, on this machine, you are getting full modeling. And so for people who are fresh, to their research in the piano um, industry and, and trying to figure out what all this terminology means. Piano modeling, of course, is different than sampling in that um, a modeling algorithm is using real-time computer-generated sound uh, based on the parameters of what's going on rather than playing back a sample of a real piano have, that's been recorded. And there's all kinds of discussion that frequently goes on and rages between what is capable of generating a more accurate sound. Uh, and you'll have some studio uh, musicians who have these big, huge computer uh, plugins that are some are sample based and then some are modeling based. So there's not necessarily a tremendous amount of agreement on which one is better at the very, very highest levels. But at this point in the industry, two, three thousand dollars, modeling dramatically expands the amount of parameters that you can play with as a musician. So if you're somebody who really enjoys tinkering with settings, really enjoys customizing experience for yourself as a player, something with modeling has a tremendous advantage. Because with the Supernatural modeling engine that's in here, and I should mention it's only on the acoustic piano sounds uh, that are in here, you can get the Piano Designer app all hooked up with Bluetooth MIDI and sit there and play with something like 20 parameters uh, to do with the piano. So string resonance, hammer resonance, you know, the overall, uh, you know, the body resonance of the instrument, how high the lid is up. Uh, and it's not just through the app. If you want to, you can also do it through the onboard piano designer as well. And so it's a huge amount of customization, which for a certain user, uh, is just a big engagement booster. You're just going to get a lot of satisfaction and fun out of playing around with the instrument. So uh, that's the point. The first point I want to make is that we're talking about a modeling engine, at least when it comes to piano. Now, as soon as you get out of the piano sound, oh, and of course, I should play that piano sound so you can hear it a little bit. So that's just the default concert piano. The DP603 is loaded up with a ton of other sounds. And so as soon as you get out of piano mode, and let's say you start to uh, play around with the E piano stuff. Oops, 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 oops. You are still experiencing the Supernatural engine, but not the modeling Supernatural engine. But it's about the best Supernatural uh, sample engine that Roland has. So there's still lots of other layers of synthesis going on top, but the fundamental tone is being recalled from a sample. Of course, polyphony is always kind of an indication of, of the quality of, of the sample or the sampling engine, not 
always, but I don't really want to get into an esoteric debate over that. Generally, it's a good bellwether on whether you've got advanced tech in there or whether it's more basic. And we're talking about 388 polyphony uh, for all of your non-piano sounds. So essentially, you're never going to run out of it. And if you're running a 16-track um, MIDI through this and using the onboard uh, general MIDI patch for this, you don't have to worry about 16 tracks of MIDI really getting bogged down with a low polyphony either. Uh, so for onboard sounds, we've talked about the acoustic piano, we've talked about uh, sort of it having so some really high quality electric piano stuff. It's kind of a tremolo EP. Nice. Kind of like a DX7. I instantly want to start playing Whitney Houston tracks whenever I hear that sample. I don't know why. I won't go further. Uh, so lots of really lush, thick sounds on there. Uh, Pretty good organ emulator on here too, uh, both in terms of the pipe organ stuff. So we do have some worship users uh, who have used the DP603 uh, in small church settings. And of course you can mix and match any two of these sounds and then And we've got the Hammond stuff. So nice mix of organs, nice mix of electric pianos, and of course, a really great suite of piano samples. Um, but the biggest ones, of course, of those are, are modeling. Then we have uh, string patches and we get into other. Now, this is loaded up not only with Roland's own um, set of high quality samples through, through uh, for the principal categories, um, but it also has over 300 sounds that come with the general MIDI patch. So this thing in total is well over 300 tones uh, that's right on board the instrument. The other cool thing about the DP603 is the speakers and the placement of the speakers. So we're just kind of continuing along talking about the sound, how it generates the sound, and how you as a player experience that sound. The DP603 actually has a sound bar is what they, they call it, um, which basically means there's this module on the lower part of the, of the frame or, or of the body of the instrument, and those speakers are facing forward, um, and they're really nice speaker boxes, really high quality speakers that are there. Um, and if I'm recalling my specs correctly, I think it's a pair of 30 watt speakers, so two discrete uh, amplifiers for left and right channels. And so you are able to push those volumes And so without having to really drive the amps, you're getting a ton of sound out front um, as a player uh, because I guess just the speakers are oriented that way. You're not getting a direct hit of those highs, so it's still nice and subtle. Um, but you are getting more sound for the money, I guess you could say, than a speaker that's possibly facing down towards uh, the floor. So that pretty much wraps up uh, you know, a quick discussion of what you're getting on the 603. Uh, essentially, for the money, uh, probably one of the, the highest values um, tone engines out there um, as it's kind of wrapped in this particular package, the DP603 package. Because, of course, this technology is uh, also found throughout the HP series and the LX series uh, in Roland, but I think this is probably the lowest cost where you're getting the modeling. Lowest cost where you're probably getting that 388 polyphony uh, for everything else, and, of course, a high-quality speaker system uh, to send out through there. You've got a few other uh, fun things to be able to play along with in addition to the piano designer which we mentioned, uh, ambient setting which is 
you know, I, some people love it, some people don't, but it's essentially Roland's uh, current a answer to a reverb uh, engine. They call it Ambient, and then Brilliance, which is kind of their EQ. So they've come up with more, what they feel, I think, more accessible names for those functions that, uh, that an everyday user can relate to. Uh, more power users might be a little frustrated by the lack of control that those two things, but I would say people new to digital audio probably appreciate it. So go figure. So just to wrap up sound, the DP603 uses modeling. This is a really big deal, not because it's the only model in the industry that has modeling on it, but it's probably one of the lowest costs that Roland offers this on. And so you're essentially getting the circuitry and you're essentially getting uh, the brains of several other far more expensive models that just has a stripped down but very elegant and contemporary cabinet on it. So that brain, that modeling brain, is a really big deal for people who love to tinker, but mostly people who just really love to get a highly complex piano tone uh, and have control over it. In addition to that, you've got sampling at 388 polyphony uh, and over 300 tones loaded up inside the instrument. So let's move on to action. We're gonna throw those specs for you to have a look yourself. So let's talk about the PHA-50. Um, as we have been doing more and more reviews of the Rollins with the PHA-4 and now some with the Rollins with the PHA-50, we're getting a ton of questions and comments in the videos asking which is the better action uh, and lots of opinions coming from different uh, sectors in the industry, home users, professional users. Um, and I guess the point, the, the, the uh, most telling thing about this is they are very different actions. And so if you really love the PHA-4, if you've played that before, don't automatically assume that you're gonna love the PHA-50 and vice versa. They are two pretty different experiences. Now, I have played the PHA-50 for thousands of hours at this point because uh, when I'm doing studio work or anything on stage, um, my gigging uh, rig is kind of based around an RD2000 Roland stage piano, which also uses the PHA-50. So I like it. That's, that's where I'm starting from. But I can see where some people uh, may feel like the action um, uh, uh, seems heavier or seems a little slower than the PHA-4. So what is the PHA-50? Well, uh, it is a... Uh, a it's an action that uh, integrates wood into the key. So essentially the core of the white key has wood material in there, uh, which more naturally simulates uh, just the motion and, and the inertia of a real wood key. That was kind of the whole concept. Uh, and so as you're playing this, uh, you do get the sense that the key feels a little more solid. There's a little less give, especially when you're playing uh, more percussively. Um, and the bottom of the keyboard also feels more solid and a little softer um, on, the, on the bottom of the key bed than you'd be used to with a PHA-4. And so I find as somebody who does some classical, uh, jazz, R&B, kind of a, a, a mix of things in a variety of settings, the PHA-50 is a nice, versatile keyboard. I don't find it too heavy, but I do see where people are coming from on the PHA-4 because it's got a little bit more of a spring up and it's a little bit more of a, I don't know, it's a livelier action in a way. You, you kind of do feel um, uh, less, uh, there's, there's less of an absorption of your energy, I guess you could, you could say on the PHA-4, which is what you'd find, say, on the FP-10, FP-30, FP-60. FP-90 shares this PHA-50 action with the DP-603. Uh, in terms of its accuracy and how sensitive it is, um, not much to complain about here. Uh, it's using a triple sensor, which means there's three different points at which the key is measured. Uh, that just helps to make sure that every part of the key stroke um, is translating accurately into MIDI data. Um, And when you're combining it with the modeling engine we were talking about earlier on piano, you get a really nice, sensitive, accurate, uh, uh, you know, rendering of, of what you're trying to do. 
I really enjoy it. So I, I like it for both classical playing, um, not that I'm a great classical player, but I, I do play a little bit of it. So I do enjoy the action for classical. I mean, I'm, I'm not a great classical player, but it, it comes up from time to time where I'm accompanying somebody or just for my own enjoyment. That was where my background was, was classical or of course jazz. It, it, so I find it to be a really versatile action. Um, and I find that the weight of the key feels very much similar to a mid to full size upright or maybe a light uh, baby grand piano, acoustic baby grand piano. Uh, they've got a beautiful texture on top of the key. It's an ivory textured key um, and a bit of a texture on the ebony black key as well. Uh, the repetition is sufficiently fast and as I said I've found it to be very durable, very accurate, very sensitive and very versatile action to play on. We're going to move on to uh, other major features now, but before that, we'll just throw a few quick specs up on the screen about the action and move on from there. It's quite clear to me that the DP603 is intended as an all-in-one um, home learning, uh, home enjoyment piano. Uh, I would say that it's not really something that's been built necessarily for professional installations, um, although it's certainly built to a quality that it could be used for that. Um, but there's all sorts of things that are catering to a home learner, and I would even say possibly even a, an adult home learner. The reason I say this uh, is that there are over 300 songs that are built into here that you're able to play along with. Um, and when you buy the instrument, I think you even get like a score sheet inside the box uh, so you can play along with all of these great classic tunes that many of which you're probably going to recognize. And you have control over whether you're shutting the left hand or the right hand off or any of the orchestral accompaniment parts off so that as you're playing along with it, you don't have to be fighting a certain piece of the music and you can be working on the right hand and just have the left hand or the accompaniment. So that's not only fun and engaging, but it might help you uh, to practice in a slightly different way than you would normally be doing so. Uh, there's also a lot of integrations with most of the popular method books out there. I think there's 11 or 12 different method book systems uh, that are built in here so that you can access a lot of the training or the, the uh, sort of the playback material within those books, which is a ton of fun as well. And it's got an onboard recorder with nice, easy controls, very obvious, and really pretty easy uh, to figure out how to use as well. Um, this is not going to take you hours and hours and hours of studying uh, the instruction manual to figure this out. So it's an easy to use unit with lots of education and lots of self-learning or self-directed learning features uh, built into it. Physically speaking, the instrument is sleek. Uh, now, it's, we're filming this and it happens to be Christmas season, so I thought it would be festive to have a white one. So you're looking at a white polished unit here. Uh, they also uh, offer it in black polish as well as a classic black, uh, which is less expensive and doesn't have that shiny sort of candy apple finish. It's got more of a satin open pour uh, veneer on it. But they all fundamentally have the same case, which is this lovely top that sort of swings down like this to close it up. It occupies very little visual space in a room. And of course, when you open, open this up, this becomes the music stand. This flips down, and there you go. It's really quite a slick design. Uh, underneath, you've got a solid uh, wood stand that's also finished in the same way, and of course, your sound bar. You can't probably see it, but there is a triple pedal down on the bottom that's also fully integrated into the case of the stand. Other things I love about this, Bluetooth connection. I briefly mentioned it at the beginning of the review, uh, but not only does this give you wireless Bluetooth MIDI, uh, so that's going to let you connect with the Roland Piano Partner 2, Piano Designer, and like a host of other apps and programs that make use of wireless Bluetooth tech. Uh, but the other thing uh, you can do with this is you can stream MIDI audio. So people who are getting used to the idea of having their phones, you know, Android or iPhone or whatever, and having a Bluetooth speaker in their house and say, okay, instead of playing through the phone, you know, you stream it to a speaker, you're getting it there. You can do the same thing on the DP603. Uh, I don't find that you're going to use the 603 as a stereo necessarily, although you could. Um, I find what people are using this for is actually to put on music that they really want to play along with 
and it's a lot more fun to have that music coming out of the same speakers as you as your piano playing is coming out of it's a simple little trick but honestly it makes you feel more so that you're playing along with the music so that's a lot of fun too uh, it has separate audio line outs, which is very handy if you want to run this into a stereo or possibly a PA. It has nothing to do with the onboard speakers, so you can plug that in and out. It doesn't shut the speakers off. And you've got uh, headphone options as well as USB connection to do uh, audio recording or, of course, to wire this straight into a computer if, for whatever reason, the wireless Bluetooth MIDI connection isn't going to do what it needs to do. People looking at this instrument may also find themselves looking at some comparables. Uh, I know from Kawhi that would uh, likely include like a CA-58 or a CA-78. Uh, those would be great ones to compare it to. Uh, on the Yamaha side, there are going to be a couple of the CLP units, possibly even uh, like a P500 uh, level with the integrated stand might not be a bad uh, comparison as well. Uh, but like I said, uh, for me, uh, this really represents a very special place in the market because for the price point, I'm just going to harp on this one last time, you're getting the modeling. So as a piano player, and particularly one who's kind of technologically uh, inclined, tinkering with that sound is a ton of fun, very engaging, and I think it's an incredible value that Roland is offering. And as usual, with all of the reviews that we do, we always have a separate video or videos where all we're doing is actually playing the piano so that you can hear it, uh, all of its kind of major principal sounds, the acoustic piano, electric piano, rather than listening to me talk on because, of course, some of you want that in-depth review and some of you really just want to hear the sound. So we try and give both. Uh, so check those videos out. And of course, if this is the first time that you've come across us on YouTube, it's the first time to the channel, we would really appreciate if you subscribed. It'll help you stay up to date with all of our most recent video content. And of course, we'd love to be helping you with your shopping process at home. Once again, my name is Stu Harrison. You've been at Miriam Piano's YouTube channel. Hope to see you back for more. Have yourself a great day. Sun is right.